the teams, uh, to sub teams, so that we could go uh, to different locations uh, so we were just, like, tight for time. Um, and I think kind of our purpose was really, rather than just getting headline questions asked of people, actually to dig a little bit deeper in terms of their experiences. Um, because actually asking someone, okay, what does self-development mean to you, is actually quite a personal question to ask, actually. <coughs> Being able to say, well, I'm actually I'm not that confident, or you know, actually, you know, I need to, to learn more about X, Y, Z. So um, we spoke to a range of people. Um, we spoke to Paul, who works at the Green Market Car Park. Um, and for me, you know, everyone else can kind of have me say, but for me, I think he was the most interesting conversation that we had because he had gone from working in a really social environment to working in a job that he is really isolated. Um, and actually we were the first people that he talked to that day and he said that from kind of reflecting on actually his new job um, he sees the value of people um, and being able to develop himself um, to be able to kind of share stories and actually feel confident in himself as well now that he's kind of sitting isolated by himself watching people cart their cars um, he really misses out on that and he said I just wish that I could put a big smiley face at the little window um, of, my, of my office um, and say kind of what's your pattern tell me your story because he really wants that engagement um, and he see, really sees the value of actually having people being able to kind of develop his skills and, and realise what he needs and the gaps in his life. Um, you mentioned something about, I think it was the woman at the gallery next to the Queen's yeah. Hotel, and she mentioned something good about um, looking for the white space, was it? White yeah, space? Well, this, yeah, it was really interesting one. actually. She, when she was studying, um, doing fine art, actually, Duncan and Jordan some years ago, um, her tutor had said to her, well, you know, you've not finished your painting, 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 look at the white space, look at the gaps, what did those gaps tell you? And actually, it's about empowering people and giving people that ownership to be able to say, right, okay, well, I know I'm good at X, Y, and Z, but actually, the gaps in my life are, I'm low in confidence, um, you know, I want to have more experiences in anything, whatever they want to have. Um, and it's being able to, actually what, what another person has said was, it's be, be enabling that invisible support from your friends, your family, your peers, your colleagues to be able to help fill those gaps. <laughs> I mean, I kind of fell into two categories. It was either people were uh, relating to it in terms of personal or uh, professional, which is mm -hmm. what we already talked about anyway. But there, and the group I was in, we ended up speaking to this woman, yeah. who's probably the most interesting person I've spoken to all year. Yeah. Um, and she basically, she charted her professional development due to personal reasons. She wanted to be able to, basically her son was becoming ill, and becoming quite ill. And she was going to doctors and wasn't really getting the sort of response she wanted. She, was being, she felt she was being talked down to. So she went and did degrees, and she's got five degrees, and right now she's doing a... She's a... A uh, head post re postdoc researcher now um, at 63. Yeah. Um, so she was amazing. Yeah. But she did that basis on the fact that she wanted to be able to go to these people and say, "Well, I'm a, don't don't speak to me as if you think I won't understand what you mean." Um, and what's happened to that is now one of her sons. He's now a I think what's really interesting about everyone that we spoke to is actually kind of identifying the value of people in those connections and the environment that you sit and work in. Um, and that support network is extremely important. So I think definitely in terms of what we're going to be doing next and what we might explore is actually looking at that support network and in an informal context actually, well how, how can you empower um, people to take ownership of their own development and identify the gaps? and find out how they can fill those gaps by talking to other people, sharing experiences and sharing their stories. Thanks very much. That's it. <laughs> so, like, how you picked out like, the likes of Paul and um, Joyce who can really be champions and ambassadors for your project. Yeah. Definitely. He actually, he was saying, are you going to be around tomorrow? Can you come back and like tell me how you're getting on and sharing your stories and tell me your ideas? And we're like, absolutely. And we'll come back because, you know, he's so isolated. He wants to just talk to people. So. Okay. Yeah. Has anybody got any feedback for these guys? <coughs> I mean, that 
was really interesting actually because he was in a supervisor's role um, and did, doing a lot of, kind of social work um, related stuff and he actually said no, I didn't supervise or I didn't like that title, not for me. Um, so I want to become self-employed and do my own thing and kind of, be, you know, take charge of my life and do what I want to do. And he said, oh, this is kind of a middle job. But he said, it's really interesting to be going from kind of supervisor to CCTV monitor. And he said, it's, it's funny how people judge you for that as well, but I don't judge myself for that. So, yeah, it's really interesting. Great. Thanks very much.